recording. All right, I'd like to welcome all of you um, to our evening webinar. We have Gina from, she's the educator from Host Defense, who's going to be helping us understand mushrooms for the immune system and immune response. And again, Please feel free to put questions in the question and answer box. We'll get to them at the end of the presentation. And I'm gonna turn it over to you, Gina. All right, thank you, Dr. Gary. Well, hi everybody, welcome. Uh, I'm Gina, Gina rivers Paltla. My role at Host Defense is a national science educator, and I'm also a co-formulator for our mycobotanicals line, which is a line that combines mushrooms and herbs together. And today we're going to explore how mushrooms uniquely benefit our immune responses as well as our longevity. And I definitely want to uh, thank Johnson Compounding and Wellness and Dr. Gary for inviting me to speak to you today. Again, if you have questions, type them in as they occur to you. Dr. Gary will get those to me at the end of the presentation. Uh, before we jump into the material, just a gentle reminder that today's presentation is for educational purposes only. Host Defense does not claim to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease or illness. And we always urge anybody that has a health concern to seek the advice of an integrative healthcare provider. All right, let's start with some fun facts about mushrooms. We know that mushrooms have been used cross-culturally on almost every single continent on this planet. Archaeological evidence suggests that mushrooms have been used even before the written word. Uh, for instance, this image on the right side of your screen was found in a cave in a remote area in Northern Africa. This drawing is part of the Tassili cave paintings. These are located in the Algerian desert it's believed that this image on your screen is over 6,000 years old. And it's been hypothesized that this is a depiction of a shaman who is covered in mushrooms. You can see it sort of cleared up here uh, and wearing a bee mask. The hat down here on the bottom right-hand side of your screen is actually made from a mushroom. It's made from the Amadou mushroom, Fomus fomentarius. And there is a culture that to this day uh, in Transylvania, they use this mushroom, the Amadou, they take the conch and they boil it down so it delaminates and then they pound it out and make this beautiful felt-like material that they then sew into very nifty hats and vests and other articles of clothing. In fact, the owner and founder of Host Defense and Fungi Perfecti, our mother company, uh, Paul Stamets, he, if you ever see him giving a TED talk or see one of his talks on YouTube, he is often wearing a hat that's very similar to this. Now, the mushroom you see on the left-hand side of your screen is the uh, revered reishi mushroom. Reishi has this auspicious reputation of being the mushroom of immortality. And historically in ancient China and Japan, reishi was reserved for use only with the royal family. We actually have a 2000 year written clinical history of this mushroom being used in traditional Chinese medicine. So you can see that mushrooms have a long and diverse history of being used by humans in many different applications, not only as food sources, but also as tools. Uh, for instance, they've been used as fire starters. They've been used as punk for early rifles. They've also been used in multiple cultures to support health and longevity. Mushrooms and animals actually share more in common than most people think. Now, mushrooms belong to a different kingdom. They belong to the kingdom of fungi. They're not plants, they're not animals. They are similar to plants in that they, plants and mushrooms both have a root-like structure, but that similarity pretty much stops there. Plants, of course, make their food from the sunlight through photosynthesis, and their roots are passive in absorption. Mushrooms cannot photosynthesize. Their root-like structure, it's called mycelium. Mycelium is 
not passive. It is metabolically active. So mushroom mycelium secretes compounds like enzymes and immune complexes. It secretes um, quorum sensing compounds. These are very specialized compounds that function as the organism's senses. And these quorum sensing compounds help the mushroom adapt to its ever-changing, ever-fluctuating environment. Humans and fungi actually share approximately 55% of the same genetic material. Now, if you put that into contrast with plants, we only share around 15% with plants. Animals and fungi both inhale oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide. Plants, of course, do just the opposite. We both have digestive systems that secrete enzymes. We have immune systems that help us keep healthy. We have senses that tells us information about the world all around us. However, we do that within the confines of a distinct physical body. Fungi also do all of that. But they do it in direct contact with their environment. And in their environment, they have to protect themselves from competitors and predators that want to eat it. So this root-like structure of mushrooms, the mycelium or the living body as it's known of the organism has become very adept at manufacturing specialized compounds that they use for their own protection. Many of these compounds have been found to promote human health and human longevity. Today, we're going to talk about how mushrooms impact the immune response. So a healthy immune system is a balanced immune system. We really, at, at Fungi Perfectine Host Defense, we want to help people understand that maintaining the immune response in a balanced state is really a key factor for ongoing health and ongoing wellness. So we often use the analogy of electricity to explain the concept of immune modulation. We would not want to walk into our homes and turn on all of the electrical appliances at one time, right? We'd probably overload something. But the opposite is also true. We don't wanna walk into our dark home at night and stub our toe, right? We want to be able to turn that light on when we need it. We want to be able to balance or modulate our electricity needs. And comparing that to a healthy immune modulation, the same is true. For the average person, balancing the immune system is a far more appropriate end goal compared to immune stimulation. If you think about it, even when we're fighting off infections, if we stimulate the immune system too much, the immune cells can send immune messenger molecules cascading throughout our bodies. These immune messenger molecules are called cytokines, and many of them are inflammatory in nature. They are what make us feel worse, even though they're making our immune cells work harder. So helping the immune system work strongly without over-responding is critical. We want to get our immune system into this balanced, we call it the Goldilocks zone. We want, we want to be in that parameter that is a very balanced zone. So, and that's a highly desirable outcome for, for anybody to have. So let's dive a little bit deeper into the immune response. There are four basic aspects of immune function. You have engagement, recruitment, clearance, and then this return to what we call watchful waiting. So I'll walk you through it. The green arrow, this is where everything starts. This is where the immune system encounters either an internal or an external trigger, meaning a perceived threat from the environment or our digestive tract or really anywhere in our bodies. It has to be a perceived threat. This is what engages our immune cells into action. The orange arrow here is uh, where the immune cells, our immune cells start recruiting each other. And they do this in fairly complex ways. The immune response at this stage is hard at work. This, is, this can create many of the feelings that we have when we're not at our best. The clearance uh, step, this is the set of processes that help clean up the wreckage that may have occurred from the trigger and or our immune cells responding to that trigger. 
And then here we have modulation in the center, this blue circle in the middle of the graphic. We have to recognize that modulation occurs at all steps for this process. It helps manage the immune response and ultimately helps to pacify it. Modulation monitors the situation and ultimately brings our immune response back to the state of alert, watchful waiting. Although there are definite stages, I also wanna mention that this process is not linear. There could be multiple triggers of engagement and in a healthy immune response, modulation occurs throughout every single step. So this keeps our immune cells functioning within normal limits by a feedback loop. In order for our bodies to thrive, we need to be able to engage and modulate this response very rapidly. We want a strong, flexible, and responsive immune system. What we don't want is an underactive immune response, nor do we want an immune system that reacts or upregulates to everything it encounters. That would be catastrophic. So moving along in our immune system discussion, how many of you have heard that 70% of the immune system is located in the gut? Probably most of you, I would bet. And most people tend to think of the intestinal tract as solely a digestive organ, but it is estimated that approximately 70% of our immune cells reside in highly specialized immune tissue within the intestinal tract. So there's a whole lot more going on in there than just digestion. The intestinal tract is a rich repository of barrier tissues, epithelial cells, immune cells, vasculature, lymphatic tissue, as well as a diverse and highly individualistic collection of microorganisms that comprise our microbiome. So in this picture, uh, you have to use your creative imagination. This is a cross section of our digestive tract and I'll walk, walk you through it. Uh, this is a representation of villi that is lining the innermost, the, the inside of our small intestine. These are finger-like projections that increase the surface area for absorption. Uh, they also create the landscape for our microbiome. And then you have these little pink cells, so I can get my pointer to work. These little pink cells are epithelial cells. Epithelial cells line our entire digestive tract. Sitting on top of these epithelial cells, these little hair-like projections are called microvilli. This barrier tissue is often referred to as the brush border because before electron microscopes were invented, these little microvilli appeared like bristles of a brush. So within the intestinal lining, you also have these rich collections of immune tissues called the Peyer's patches. You have lymphatic vessels and lymph nodes. And this is where the lion's share of the immune cells of our whole body resides and functions. The intestinal microbiome, actually, the intestinal microbiome exists in a mucus layer. Now, the author of this picture did not draw a mucus layer, but just imagine that there's a mucus layer on top of these little microvilli. And within this mucus layer is where uh, the majority of our microbiome exists. There, they can create biofilms, they can subside from the nutrient-rich content of the lumen which is the innermost aspect of our digestive tract. There's a tremendous amount of immune activity that's activated and modulated by our gut microbiome. In fact, that's known as our primary immune system, supporting a probiotic microbiome and supporting a balanced immune response within the intestinal tract. These are both related and important strategies for long-term health and wellness. The cool thing about mushrooms is that they contain various different compounds that directly engage with many of our immune cells. Later, we're going to look at some research that describes the complex interplay between beneficial mushrooms and our immune response. But first, I'd like to give you a little bit of background about our company and why you would wanna choose a host defense mushroom. Uh, host defense really started in the supplement retail arena over a decade ago, uh, there were not a lot of companies out there making mushroom products at that time. 
But now mushrooms have gained a lot of popularity. There are several companies that now specialize in mushroom production uh, or have mushroom products or uh, formulas that contain mushrooms. So before we jump into reviewing the individual mushroom species and the research, I wanna take just a little time and describe what makes Host Defense a very unique company. Host Defense products are robustly tested to ensure that they are not only effective, but that they are also safe. We have always adhered to good manufacturing practices. Host Defense utilizes independent labs with internationally recognized and valid testing methods. We test for identity, purity, composition, and strength. We validate the authenticity of our mushrooms by both genetic and biochemical assays. And we screen all of our raw materials for pesticide contamination, industrial waste compounds, heavy metal screening is performed, as well as microbiological testing. Another very unique aspect of host events is that we actually grow all of our own mushrooms right here in the United States in the beautiful state of Washington. We do not import our mushrooms of material from, from other countries. We have certified organic status as both mushroom growers as well as supplement manufacturers. These are two separate certifications that we've had for over 20 years now. And we use multiple stages of the mushrooms life cycle in our products. We're using mushroom mycelium. We are also using uh, fermented substrate as well as the adult fruit bodies in our products. We are a vertically integrated company. We're we're beyond carbon neutral. We actually offset greater than 10 times the amount of carbon that we emit as a company. And we have always donated a portion of income towards important research on subjects associated with mushrooms, mycelium, and planetary health. So speaking of using multiple stages of the mushroom life cycle, uh, I wanted to give you a clearer picture of that and uh, and show you what mycelium looks like under electron scan. This is an electron scan of mushroom mycelium. And you can see how small the little tendrils actually are. They're typically only one cell wall thick. Uh, and here you see an image of the mushroom mycelium digesting and fermenting its substrate. On the right is a picture, a representation of our, uh, from our grow room of an adult fruit body. This adult fruit body is the lovely lion's mane mushroom. So we recognize that all aspects of the mushroom are rich in health promoting compounds. And we try to incorporate as many of these parts of the mushrooms into our products as we can. We utilize a cultivation technique called solid state fermentation to grow our mushroom mycelium. So this means that we are using a substrate or a food for the mushroom that humans can easily digest. The substrate that we use is organic brown rice and we have excellent scientific reasoning for using rice as a growth medium. Brown rice is an excellent food source for both humans as well as mushroom mycelium. It's naturally gluten-free and it's well tolerated by most people. As the mushroom mycelium digests this brown rice or its substrate, it actually is fermenting it by secreting enzymes to break down the fibers and break down the starches. And this makes various health promoting nutrients more bioavailable to the human digestive tract. The mycelium digests and converts the rice starch into various highly nutritive compounds, including a class of compounds called arabinosylase. Now that's not gonna be on the test, you don't have to remember it, but this is a class of non-caloric polysaccharides and many of them have been studied and found to be immunologically beneficial. Rice allows for the harvesting of not only the mushroom mycelium, but also the fermented rice and the fermentation metabolites. This is what the mycelium secretes into its substrate as it's digesting it. These are storehouses of supportive compounds like enzymes, uh, prebiotics, the mushroom's own unique immune complexes are in those fermentation metabolites. So 
those precious compounds would be completely lost if we grew this process on a non-edible substrate like wood uh, because humans can't digest wood. We can't even digest fermented wood. Research on mushroom mycelium is very exciting. It's cutting edge, it's ongoing. We continue to learn more and more about mushrooms every year and host defense is part of that scientific process. We actually have a dedicated research team that studies our products and creates manuscripts for publication in peer reviewed journals. We're on the leading edge in not just the supplement industry, but in mycological science as well. So I'm going to show you two studies that are examples of the exemplary work conducted by our research team in conjunction with independent labs. Uh, that create, to create peer-reviewed journal articles that reflect the efficacy of host defense mushroom products. So far, the research we have on host defense mushrooms suggests that they can be the perfect support for modulation of the immune response. This peer-reviewed journal article studied the host defense's turkey tail mycelium and residual fermented rice. This paper was published in 2019 uh, it was published in the BMC Complementary and Alternative Medicine Journal, a, a very prestigious medical journal uh, that's also open access, meaning you could look it up and download this paper for free. The researchers examined both the turkey tail mycelium as well as the residual fermented rice substrate separately and analyzed both of their activities separately. So they discovered that the turkey tail mushroom mycelium has to distinctly different biological and immune modulating properties than its fermented substrate. They found that the mycelium triggers the engagement of innate and acquired immune cells in a balanced way, but still triggered the engagement. The fermented rice was found to be very active in terms of immune modulation. Remember that central aspect of the immune stages that, that, that is uh, crucial for all different stages. So the results suggest that the overall beneficial effects are associated with both the mushroom mycelium itself, as well as the highly bioactive fermented rice. The mechanisms associated with the fermented rice activity can help keep the immune system in that balanced Goldilocks zone where we want it to be. And this second study was published in February of 2020. This research focused on my community. This is Host Defense's 17 mushroom flagship formula. The research describes the complex immune response elicited by the mushroom mycelium and the fermented rice. This research demonstrated that both a strong engagement of immune cell activity occurred as well as a strong immune system resolution. It saw an extensive response of cell signaling compounds and growth factors that promote cellular regeneration, clearance, and eventually resolution of the, the immune response. So the mycelium and the fermented organic brown rice, once again, together show us that modulation of the immune response can have a powerful impact on long-term health and vitality. So we just sped through a lot of background information. This is a really nifty chart. If you're new to mushrooms, you can find it on the host defense website uh, or in a host defense product guide. Uh, it details seven of the species that we use in our products. You can see the individual species primary action identified by the red cell, but you'll notice that many of these species have overlapping benefits for multiple body systems. Uh, so I also want to direct your, uh, direct your attention to the, the um, row that says immune response because you will notice that all mushrooms benefit a balanced immune response. In addition, each species may be able to support two or three or four or more systems of the body at one time. So this can be very helpful for a person that maybe they don't want to take a whole lot of supplements or maybe uh, they have financial restrictions. If you learn about the individual species of mushrooms, sometimes you can choose one product instead of two or three to support your health goals. So let's go through some products and find one that may be the best fit for you.
for mush mushroom products uh, that best support immune modulation, host effects, have, host effects actually have several different options. Uh, Agaricon is a wonderful single species option. Agaricon is the mascot of fungi perfecti and host defense mushrooms. It's been very well, it's been researched and found to strongly engage the immune system as well as the immune system's modulatory functions. So Agaricon can be a powerful support for maintaining a strong and balanced immune response all year long. Earlier, we reviewed a research article on host defenses turkey tail. Host defenses turkey tail has also been studied by independent researchers at Bastyr University and the University of Minnesota in a human clinical trial. As part of the trial, women who had undergone intensive conventional treatments experienced decreased white blood cell numbers and natural killer cell activity. We know from research that it typically takes a person anywhere from nine months to over a year for their natural killer cells and lymphocytes to rebound after these intensive conventional treatments. This study groups, uh, the study group in this uh, particular, we had have, we have three different groups taking three different servings of turkey tail and the study group receiving six grams of turkey tail experienced a rebound of immune activity after just two weeks of use. And after four weeks of use, that activity actually doubled. So that was pretty impressive. The study shows the strong immune modulatory support turkey tail can provide. Now, this study used freeze-dried and concentrated host defense turkey tail uh, mycelium and fermented substrate. The beneficial outcome was seen at six grams a day to reiterate. This may be more convenient and appealing to achieve if that if you are using a powder. An additional benefit is that turkey tail is a strong prebiotic. It may remodel the intestinal terrain in a beneficial way. Liquid extract is also available for people that either have capsule fatigue or they have problems swallowing. For upper respiratory and seasonal support, we have breathe. Helping the immune system to maintain its appropriate functioning can be very helpful for many people. Breathe is a three mushroom formula. It supports healthy respiratory function and a balanced immune response. Reishi is in this formula. We know that Reishi is a systemic immune modulator. Chaga supports the balanced immune response to the cells that line the interior surface of our lungs, as well as our intestines and our skin. These are all the same tissue types. Cordyceps helps reduce hyperreactive airways and increases the volume of air that we can inhale. Cordyceps also increases the amount of oxygen that we take into our systems. So all together, the three mushrooms support graceful breathing. The liquid is rapid in its response. It's often experienced within just two to five minutes after a serving. The capsules, stay in the system longer. They can be used daily to help maintain a balanced immune response. Another product that can support upper respiratory wellness is our Elderberry Plus syrup. Elderberry Plus is really a three-in-one product that supports immediate immune function. One serving is two teaspoons. It contains 100 milligrams of elderberry extract. 2,000 milligrams of elderberry juice concentrate, and one full gram, that's like two capsules worth, of mushrooms, equal parts reishi, turkey tail, and chaga. Both the extract and juice concentrate have been found to support upper respiratory wellness, but they do contain different compounds, so they provide a full spectrum of the constituents found in the elderberry. Combining them together and adding mushrooms really gives a full range of support for strong engagement and modulation of the immune system. And one of my best friends, MycoShield, this is an immune spray that consists of five mushrooms. So each spray has the same five mushrooms, agaricon, reishi, chaga, birch polypore, and turkey tail. And then we've added natural vegan flavors to make them more palatable. Uh, Myco Shield is great for people who are in the public a lot, people using public transportation, teachers, medical staff, 
people that are in retail setting. If you interact with the public or you come into contact with lots of people every day, you're the perfect candidate for Myco Shield. There are five flavors to choose from, so you're sure to find one that suits your palate. And uh, you can use up to six sprays three to four times a day uh, to really take a proactive approach for immune health. Now, if you're looking for a mushroom formula that supports your whole body for both men and women, Stamets 7 would be a good choice. This is a formula of equal amounts of seven mushrooms, cordyceps, reishi, lion's mane, chaga, maitake, royal sun eye, and misama. These seven mushrooms support balanced immune functioning while also supporting just about every other system of our body. Each carefully selected mushroom species in this work for our lungs, our liver, for brain and nerve health, blood glucose already within normal range, heart, the cardiovascular system, essentially our whole body. And now we know that most, if not all of these mushrooms also support a healthy intestinal microbiome. So Stamet 7 is our daily immune support formula. It is a great mushroom multi that's available in capsules and a powder as well as a liquid extract. And my community, earlier we looked at some re research on this formula. This is the most complex formula in the host defense line. These 17 mushrooms provide a complex synergy of mycelial polysaccharides, immune complexes, fermented rice polysaccharides and uh, fermentation metabolites. So this formula strongly engages the immune response in a balanced manner. It allows our bodies to fight harder when we feel like we need it the most. This is another chart that might be helpful. It's our immune support for every season. So it looks at various aspects of immune functioning and which products show mild, moderate, strong, and primary support for the various aspects of the immune system. You can also find this chart on the host defense website if you would like a closer look. And it is now easier than ever to incorporate mushrooms into your daily wellness routine. We have a wide variety of delivery methods. The capsules are convenient. They're concentrated. They're a great option for long-term support. The powders are the exact same material found in the capsules. They are actually very palatable. They're great for anybody who has capsule fatigue or problems swallowing. Uh, you can add them to smoothies. You can cook with them, they're heat stable, uh, and they're very uh, neutral in taste. They don't really change the flavor uh, of your foods. I love to use the powders in my oatmeal. The liquid extracts are actually complex solutions. They include cold water, hot water and alcohol extracts of mushroom mycelium, fermented substrate, and some liquids breeding body extract. They absorb rapidly. They provide a more immediate immune modulation. And for your functional foodies, we have teas. The mycobotanical teas include mushroom mycelium, mushroom fruit bodies. They also include mycelial and fruit body extracts. These are combined with 100% organic, uh, tasty and beneficial herbs. So these are an easy way to add mushrooms into your wellness routine. And even if you're new to mushrooms and you don't like capsules, this is a great easy way to start adding some into your daily wellness um, uh, routine. We also went over our very tasty delivery system earlier of the elderberry plus. In addition to elderberry, you're getting a full gram of reishi, turkey tail, and chaga. That's like taking two capsules worth. So this is great for picky palates or even for kids. Well, I want to thank all of you uh, for joining me for this webinar today. Uh, these are just a few of the awards that we have won for our mycobotanicals products. Uh, our mycobotanicals products blend mushrooms and herbs together to support specific systems uh, of the body. Post Defense is really consistently recognized for creating unique and effective products that work for uh, us and work for the planet. 
So thank you again for giving me some time. I think I might have some questions. I see them up there. Hi, Gary. <laughs> Hello. Um, thank you for a wonderful presentation. We have a couple of questions. If anyone else has any, please type them in. And I also <clears throat> want to thank you for all the support not only in your in the company's research and getting information out to practitioners and to the um, consumer, but we're carrying your line because it is levels way above the other mushroom lines out there. The science behind it, the qualities there, the purities there, the testings there, and that's very important in this day and age because there's so many products that look great in a package but what you're actually getting isn't what you think you're getting. So thank you. Um, our first question is besides immune support, do mushrooms have any effect on the nervous system and maybe anxiety? Oh, wow, that's a great question. And you know, the mushroom that comes to my mind is lion's mane. We looked at a uh, picture of lion's mane earlier. Lion's mane is a very unique edible mushroom that has been researched for decades now and found to contain certain classes of compounds that, that increase the body's production of compounds called nerve growth factors and brain-derived neurotrophic factors. Now I'm going to tell on myself a little bit. Years and years ago when I went through nursing school, we were actually taught at a collegiate level of uh, anatomy that brain cells were finite you were born with a certain amount they actually died as you got older and you just they dropped off and dr gary's like yes i remember learning that we were also told or taught that when nerve damage occurred it was permanent now we know that's not true now because we've discovered something called stem cells brain derived neurotrophic factor and nerve growth factor did tell our stem cells to differentiate into neurological tissue so lion's mane has been studied in a few human clinical trials and found to um, benefit cognitive functioning, short-term memory recall. Uh, there have been preliminary studies that show that lion's mane uh, can um, speed up the nerve regeneration process because uh, we know neurological tissue can, can actually uh, 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 repair itself. It's just a slower process than other body systems. So lion's mane would be where I would look for neurological and uh, mental and, and cognitive support. That would be my number one mushroom. Now reishi also has a good bit of research around its benefit of cognitive functioning, especially in the ability to provide antioxidant capacity for neurological tissue. Uh, but we do know that mushrooms in general actually tend to have a correlation uh, or an inverse correlation with cognitive decline. There was a study done in Singapore that analyzed, it was a cross-sectional study that looked at about 600, I think there were 600 participants and found that those that consume two or more servings of dietary mushrooms in their diet every week had a much less chance of developing cognitive decline compared to people that had one or one serving or less of mushrooms every week. So we want you to start considering mushrooms, uh, not just for your daily uh, supplement protocol, but also putting them in your diet and finding them, finding ways to put them in your diet when you can. Great, thank you. Are there any side effects of using mushrooms? We really wouldn't say side effects. When we say side effects, I tend to think my mind goes right to a pharmaceutical or a drug. Um, there are always going to be some people that respond um, to a food, and mushrooms are foods, they're going to respond in not the way that we foresaw them to respond to, or they have sensitive biochemistries. It's rare, but it does happen. If someone has a true mushroom allergy, we would, of course, urge them to seek supplementation outside of the realm of mushroom supplementation. But we also have to recognize that when someone tests for mushroom allergies, they're only testing one mushroom, that boring brown mushroom that you find on top of your pizza or on your Philly cheese. Uh, and that's Agaricus bisporus. That is not uh, of the same caliber of, as the mushrooms that we grow for our, our um, supplement line. Agaricus bisporus is um, a mushroom that grows on compost. 
It's, it's not a higher life form like uh, a lot of the beneficial mushrooms that we grow at host defense. Not to say it's not beneficial. They are beneficial if they're cooked well and grown organically. Um, but that would, if you have a true mushroom allergy, then we would tell you not to, to use it. The only other uh, caution we, we, we normally tell people about is if you're on a prescription blood thinner, Coumadin, Orthurin, uh, Plavix, uh, really you need to be running everything through a healthcare provider, or Dr. Gary, or a, somebody that can, can really tell you if there's going to be any interactions. But uh, there has been conflicting research around reishi uh, inhibiting platelet aggregation. So in an abundance of caution, we say, don't use reishi, you know, if you're on one of those products. Um, there's also been a little bit of uh, preliminary research around cordyceps and uh, people that are on organ transplant uh, rejection medications. So in an abundance, in an abundance of caution, we'll say if you are on, you know, a medication, if you have an organ transplant, to stay away from cordyceps. Those really are the only real, real contraindications that we have. Um, all mushrooms have a tendency to uh, help with blood sugar balance. So uh, we do advise caution if someone is insulin dependent, meaning they are injecting insulin and taking uh, a higher serving size of mushrooms, particularly maitake, they really need to keep a close eye on their insulin units and their blood sugar because they may need to adjust it, but that's not really a contraindication, it's just definitely, you know, keep a close eye on your blood sugar levels. And that, that's about it. Okay, thank you. And last question, being a food, are they better on an empty stomach or with a meal? Does it matter? You know, here's the thing. It, as an herbalist, I always tell people, when are you going to remember to take it? Because it's, if it sits on the counter, it's not going to do you any good, sure. right? So some people feel that they get more benefit taking them on an empty stomach. But the reality is, is that many of these compounds that have a beneficial response in the body, the food does not dilute them. Uh, a lot of them don't ever even leave the digestive tract. All of their action is going on inside the digestive tract. A lot of the beta glucans and uh, a lot of those polysaccharides, they're not caloric. They're not being absorbed. Uh, they're actually having um, having their reaction as they move through the digestive tract. So really, that's going to be fine whether you take it with food or not. Um, but some people, for instance, if you're taking cordyceps for energy, because cordyceps is very energizing, most people tend to feel that energy more if they take it on an empty stomach. So there may be some situations where you want to take it on an empty stomach, but really the important thing is just getting the menu. So it's when you're going to remember to take them. Okay. Well, thank you so much for a wonderful presentation and all this great information. And the Customer Appreciation Week runs through the this coming weekend. Everything is 20% off. So a great time to try a new mushroom blend. So Gina, thank you so much. I hope thank we'll you, see Dr. each Gary. other again soon. And I hope so too. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. I'm glad. Everyone have a good night. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.